So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to go through the steps that you need to take in order to, to determine if a molecule, um, what type of intermolecular force a molecule has. And based on that, um, in order to determine that, you need to decide whether the molecule is polar or nonpolar. So I'm going to just provide you with two different examples. So the first example I'm going to give you is just NF3. Okay. So the first thing that I have to do for this molecule is I first need to draw out the Lewis dot structure for NF3. Well, to draw out the Lewis dot structure, you need to determine how many valence electrons NF3 has. Well, nitrogen has five valence electrons, fluorine has seven, and so if I do five plus 21, because there are three fluorines, I would have a total of 26 valence electrons. Okay. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually draw this out. So I've got nitrogen at the center, Okay, and I'm going to draw fluorines like this because I know preemptively that it's going to have this shape. Okay, but if you don't know that, that's fine. You can draw it out with your fluorines equidistant and then you can correct it later on. Okay, then I'm going to add my lone pairs of electrons. Well, fluorine needs eight around it and it already had two from that sharing of electrons. So now it has eight here. Now this one has eight and then the last fluorine is going to get six around it to make it eight okay and then the nitrogen has two four six so i'm going to add two here to give it eight as well and so if you count up valence electrons i've got two here four six eight then i've got 10 12 14 16 18 20 22 24 26 and i'm good to go now I'm going to draw, in order to determine if this molecule is polar or nonpolar, I'm going to draw out the dipoles. Well, the dipoles exist because this bond right here is polar, because fluorine is more electronegative than nitrogen. So the bond itself, if I were to ask, is the bond polar, you would say yes, because you've got two different elements on either side, and fluorine is more electronegative, so you're going to have a net pole like that, because the arrow is facing the atom that has a higher electronegativity. Same thing here and same thing here. So to determine if the molecule is polar or nonpolar, what you need to be asking yourself is do the dipoles cancel? And in this case they don't because you got pulling down, pulling down, pulling down, nothing pulling up. So since your dipoles do not cancel, the molecule is going to be polar. Okay, so that's the first step that you got to do. Your next step it's to determine what type of intermolecular force you have. So IMF, well there are three different types of intermolecular forces. If you have a polar molecule, you can either have dipole-dipole or you can have hydrogen bonding. Now hydrogen bonding only exists if you have hydrogen and you have either F, O, or N. Okay. If your molecule is nonpolar, then the intermolecular force that's going to be at work is going to just be your dispersion forces. Okay, so for here, because it's polar, and while I do have fluorine, I don't have hydrogen, this is just going to be dipole, dipole. Okay, if I were to give you another example, for example, if I were to give you um, CH4, let's say, okay. When I draw out CH4, carbon has four valence electrons, hydrogen has one, so that's a total of eight. So if I were to draw this out, I would have hydrogen on the top. This is a tetrahedral shape, by the way. Okay, This is what my molecule looks like. So if you think about it, since carbon is more electronegative than hydrogen, your dipoles, because this is a polar bond, your dipole would be going in that direction towards the carbon towards the carbon, towards the carbon. So these dipoles do actually cancel each other out because you got down, you got up, you got going to the left, going to the right, and so this molecule is going to be nonpolar, which means the type of intermolecular force you're dealing with is dispersion. Now, one other thing that you should have noticed is in these types of problems, all of these molecules, the intramolecular force, so the force with in the molecule has been covalent, meaning electrons are being shared. And you have a covalent bond if you have two 
non-metals. So a non-metal and another non-metal. Okay. If you had instead, for example, if I gave you NaF, sodium is an ion. Sodium is a metal, which means that the intramolecular force you, you're dealing with here would be ionic because you have a metal and a nonmetal. Okay? So if it's ionic, you actually don't have to do any of this because the force that's overwhelming or that's responsible for everything that you see is not any of these, it's actually ionic, since ionic is your strongest type of inter intramolecular force, or any type of force, it's your strongest. 